Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be talking about a very brief introduction to the periodic table, specifically the major groups, um, and realize we're not going to cover all of the groups. Um, and not only that, but we're also going to be color coding a periodic table with all of the major groups, though, at the end. So even though we're not going to cover all of the groups uh, verbally, let's say, um, visually, you'll get to at least label all of them at the end. So first group that we're going to look at here, we're going to look at the alkali metals. So the alkali metals can be found on the far left side of the periodic table. They include lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. And uh, notice that hydrogen is not an alkali metal, even though it's in this first column. That's also something to kind of make sure you know. Um, first thing you should know, that they have one valence electron. So that's why they're in this first column. It's because they all share the little property that they have one valence electron. Um, states of matter, every single one of them is a solid at room temperature. Their density and hardness, they generally have lower densities. Um, quite a few of these actually will float on water. So they have a density that's lighter than one gram per milliliter. And uh, their hardness is pretty soft. So when we do our demonstration, you'll notice that I'm able to cut lithium and sodium with just a plastic uh, knife. Um, it's pretty easy to cut them apart. Colors, they're all silver and shiny. Here is a little picture of sodium metal when it's outside of its little mineral oil um, covering that we normally have over it. Um, but notice it's silver and shiny. It starts to immediately oxidize though the second you take it out of there. So it will react with oxygen like very readily and it will start to turn white and powdery. Um, something you should definitely note, they react violently with water. So I'm not sure what alkali metal this actually is, but um, you can see that when it's added to the water, it explodes. Um, not every alkali metal reacts as violently as this, um, especially depending on how much you, you actually use. But um, regardless, uh, what happens is it actually starts to turn um, the water into hydrogen and oxygen. So um, it chemically separates the water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas and then the heat from this actually ignites it and then you get a nice little explosion um but yeah so that's just a property that all alkali metals share next the alkaline earth metals notice that it's alkaline not alkali and so right here we have the second column on the periodic table beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium and so they have two valence electrons, hence why they're in the second column. They're also all solid. They have low densities and are also soft, but if we're going to be comparing them to the previous ones, their density is actually uh, heavier than these ones are. Still light by metal standards, but still actually relatively um, low. Um, it just they're heavier, um, generally speaking, than the uh, alkali metals. Also soft, but again, not as soft as the alkaline, or sorry, it's the alkali metals. So alkaline earth metals are a little bit harder, but still by comparison, pretty soft. Colors, still silver and shiny. So here's some calcium in a little test tube. And then notice that they somewhat react with water. They don't react as violently. Here's an example. Here's calcium in water. Notice that um, unlike the first one that we saw, it was floating on water, calcium sinks. So clearly its density is greater than one. Um, and then notice that it's making still hydrogen gas. Um, but, you know, once again, um, you can see hopefully that even though it's making this gas, um, that it's not, you know, igniting or anything, and, you know, it's not creating an explosion. Uh, same thing with like magnesium. So magnesium, um, is one of those metals that uh, floats. It has a density that's, I believe, less than um, one. And then uh, if you were to put it in water at room temperature, it doesn't really do anything at all. It'll just sit there. But if it's hot water, like we boil water and do it, it'll react, but very little. Next, transition metals. This entire portion of the periodic table is going to be the transition metals. So valence electrons, normally between one to three. Uh, I guess we've, we've done already electron configurations, so I can tell you this is the D block of the electron configuration stuff we were talking about, right? So you can notice there are 10 uh, elements here, and that these 10 elements um, correspond to, you know, the 10 electrons that you can actually have in the D block. Uh, states of matter, all of them are solids except for Hg, that is mercury. It's a liquid at room temperature. Density. 
generally pretty high. Hardness, generally pretty hard. Colors, um, obviously most of them are still kind of silvery gray, but gold is gonna be more of a yellow color. Copper is gonna be an orange color. Um, some of them discolor when they oxidize and stuff, so it varies. And then something to note is that most of the compounds are very colorful. So like we have, you know, um, iron to sulfate, cobalt to chloride, copper to sulfate, nickel to sulfate. All of these right here are um, transition metal compounds. And then potassium dichromate, the uh, dichromate part has chromium in it. And so um, the it's, it's in an ion though, but still you get these really bright colors. Next, we have the other non-metals, and I put that in parentheses, uh, not parentheses, quotation marks, but there's a reason for it. So uh, these are the quote-unquote other non-metals. So hydrogen gets included in that. We have uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and selenium. So I'm, I'm calling them the other non-metals for a reason. I'll tell you that in a bit. But their valence electrons between four to six. So carbon has four. Uh, nitrogen and phosphorus have five, and then oxygen, sulfur, and selenium have six. Uh, hydrogen has one. It's the outlier because it's in the first column technically, but it's a non-metal. So solids or gases are pretty much what we have here. So oxygen is obviously a gas. We know that nitrogen is a gas, and we know that hydrogen is a gas. Um, carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, and selenium are all going to be, though, uh, solids. Density, low pretty low density. Also normally pretty weak and brittle. I mean, carbon, obviously you have, you know, diamond, which is like one of the hardest substances on earth, but still if we ignore that most carbon that we have on earth is actually just charcoal, right? And that's, you know, pretty, pretty weak and pretty brittle. Colors, um, black, that would be like carbon, red, phosphorus can come in many varieties, but red is one of its colors. Uh, yellow would be like sulfur, and then clear, hydrogen is a clear gas, nitrogen is a clear gas, and oxygen is a clear gas. So here are, you know, here's like our nice little brittle sulfur, a chunk of charcoal, and then here we have our phosphorus, red phosphorus here at the bottom. So for the most part, they're bad conductors of heat and electricity. So that's just a little, um, a little note to keep track of there. Next, halogens. So the halogens are right here. They're in the second to last group of the periodic table. They have seven valence electrons. Their states of matter, gas, liquid, or solid. We have all states of matter actually in this column. Uh, density, pretty low, also weak and brittle. And then colors, yellow, orange, purple. We've got a lot of different colors going on here. Um, in fact, here is some chlorine gas, here is some bromine, and then here is some iodine. So I guess I should tell you which ones are which. So fluorine and chlorine at room temperature are gases. Bromine is a liquid. Uh, iodine and astatine are solids. And then notes. This is the most reactive group on the periodic table. Um, it reacts violently with most elements. Um, if you have these elements, uh, they readily want to take an electron from something, and so they will do whatever they can to do that. Um, this looks like, you know, you're just like setting some charcoal on fire. Um, with like, you know, I don't know, this looks like it could be a lighter. Uh, this tube though is actually just fluorine gas. So they're pumping fluorine gas and the second it hits this charcoal, it immediately takes electrons from it and starts to burn. So um, these are not very friendly elements. They will steal whatever they can from other elements on the periodic table. And then obviously last but not least, we have the noble gases. So the noble gases are our last one right here. They have eight valence electrons. The only exception to that, which I forgot to include, is helium has two. Um, it only has two electrons, so it can't have eight in its valence state. Remember, it goes 1s2. That would be helium's electron configuration. States of matter, they are all gases, hence why they're called the noble gases. They are very low density, and they have no hardness because they're not solids. They are all colorless, but something that makes them really stand out. Uh, when you pump electricity through them or ionize them, they release different colors. Um, and then the other big note is they're called the noble gases because they don't react. Generally speaking, they don't react with things. So we have helium, we have neon, we have argon, krypton, and xenon. And these are the colors that they release when you pump electricity through them. So you can freeze frame this this is what you need to label on your periodic table. So notice, right, that we kind of left some things out here. 
Um, specifically, we did not talk about the basic metals. We did not talk about semi-metals. We'll talk about them later. We did not talk about the lanthanides or the actinides because that part of the periodic table was cut off. So hopefully you found that helpful.